What is going on, everyone? Welcome into the Cleveland Browns Report by Chat Sports. I've got a fun show planned out for everyone. As we come off the high of re-signing Clowney, I figured, why don't we think of what else could go perfectly for the rest of the offseason? So, we're going to look at my five-step perfect plan for the remainder of the 2022 NFL offseason. What I'd love to see the Browns do from now until week one. And surprise, surprise, the first one... First option, first plan, first note on my offseason plan, trade Baker Mayfield yesterday. Like, get this over with. You know what I mean? Get this storyline out of the way so we don't have to talk about it anymore. Because that comes a little hypocritical for me because I'm talking about it right now. And I understand that. But I think we can all agree we're ready for this to be over. And what's maybe holding back a deal or holding back a trade is whether or not the Browns want to eat a good chunk of Baker's salary. Now, Albert Breer at Sports Illustrated had an interesting note I thought everyone should see. My understanding is Cleveland's already offered to take on a good chunk of his $18.8 million in guaranteed money for this fall to facilitate a trade. And a trade may have already happened if they were willing to take on more, which is where this really does come down to value, plain and simple. It's a little interesting. Seeing Albert Breer say that because the early reports were Baker was digging, oh, sorry, Barry was digging himself in and he did not want to eat any of that money. I'm guessing Andrew Barry is in no rush. He is willing to take his time and he is betting on either the Carolina Panthers or the Seattle Seahawks folding and coming back to him, picking up the phone, calling him and go, all right, you called our bluff. We don't want to run with Sam Darnold or Drew Locke. We'll take Baker Mayfield. Now, which team do I think folds? I'm leaning more towards the Carolina Panthers. So here's my most recent updated trade idea 10.10. .10. Browns get a conditional fourth rounder that can turn into a third because like that Carson Wentz trade idea, you know, spurs that idea. And the Panthers get Baker Mayfield. So a conditional fourth that could turn into a third. And in return, Carolina gets an obvious upgrade over Sam Darnold. And Matt Corral. So that's what I've got for my latest trade idea. But if you are ready to just trade Baker and get this whole saga over with, here's what my call is out to everyone watching. Share the video on Twitter. All right, it's very simple. We've got some five step plans. We can outline it for you because all you got to do is click the share button, select the Twitter icon or whatever social media platform you use, tag me at Matthew PD, use Hashtag Baker's beer. Because coming off that picture of Baker and Emily Mayfield on that road trip that I may have said was in Seattle, that probably slash definitely wasn't in Seattle, and I saw a lot of people run with it, so hand up on my end right there. Yeah, let's use that hashtag, get it going, because I was wondering what, what beer was Baker drinking in the picture. Click tweet, and I'll show you some love on Twitter. Let's get this video out into the world. Let's get hashtag Baker's beer going so we can know what kind of beer he was drinking and we can get him off the team and just move on to the rest of the offseason. My second note of my perfect offseason plan is the young wide receivers impress at OTAs, which depending on when you're watching this is either today on Tuesday, that's when it's starting, or it's yesterday or the day before. But the reason I say this and the reason why this is the second note on my perfect offseason ahead of some other things is look at the depth chart here. There's a lot of faith in Donovan Peoples-Jones, Anthony Schwartz, and David Bell. I've got them in this order because I believe until we see Bell play a snap, you should keep the incumbent ahead of the rookies unless it's a clear and obvious upgrade, right? But after Cooper, there's a bit of a drop-off here. And so I'm wondering if no, I'm wondering. I would love to see these wide receivers really take the next step and really look like they could be a wide receiver too, a starting slot, a starting slot receiver, right? You know what I'm saying? We've got a lot of faith in this plan A B has put together. Of yeah, we got Deshaun Watson. These guys should be elevated with his presence. We don't need to go out and re we don't we don't, need, we don't need to bring back Jarvis Landry or go sign Will Fuller or Julio Jones or someone else. We like our current stable of wide receivers. But who do you think will be wide receiver too? Anthony Schwartz, Donovan Peoples-Jones, David Bell. Right, Which of these three guys, the most likely candidates, will emerge as that top, top, top guy after Amari Cooper? Personally, I'm drinking the David Bell Kool-Aid. Like I, 
I know he had a bad 40 time, but I've shown the graphic before. There's a lot of great receivers, like Cooper Cup, who won the Triple Crown last year, didn't have a good 40 time. This guy's just a good wide receiver. Like Anthony Schwartz, for example, I don't want to rag on the guy, but he's an awesome track star. There's a lot of fast people in the world. Doesn't mean they can play football, right? David Bell looks like a football player. David Bell at Purdue looked like an awesome wide receiver. Did his combine results say that? No. But I watched him play. I watched him play at ross Aid Stadium. He's a good player. Stay tuned, by the way. We're talking about stadiums here. Don't think I forgot. Because on Friday's video, we talked about the potential renaming of First Energy Stadium. And I put a call out saying, comment your best name ideas. It's just a pretty busy week right now with this and Genevieve Clowney resigning and OTAs. So I'm not, I'm just going to shelf it for a couple days here. But we're going to revisit this in a few days towards the end of the week. So stay tuned that for that. We will vote on the best name ideas you guys submitted for a new First Energy Stadium. Help us out, by the way. We are almost at 9,000 subscribers. I really appreciate everyone that has taken the time, which is a quarter second, to hit that big red button and subscribe. 16 away from reaching 9K, an awesome milestone. And then we're on the road to 10,000. Hit that big red button if you are looking for free Browns news and rumors coverage. Plus, we have live shows. Now we're on Thursdays. I got the move over. Finally petitioned my bosses for Eastern on Thursdays. So make sure you tune in for that. That way you get to be a part of a live show and we can interact during the show. Now my third step of a perfect offseason plan, sign veteran defensive tackle for cheap. We know the two names I'm talking about. It's the two biggest names on the street right now, Akeem Hicks and Indomitian Sue. I asked yesterday, which one would you guys rather have? And I would say 80% of people said Sue. So I want to compare their stats over the last two seasons because, yes, Sue has had a better statistical performance. And I don't know if you could, you could probably say he's had a better performance overall, right? There are different defensive tackles. Sue is a little bit more of a nose tackle, a little bit more of a run stopper. He's going to clog the hole and bring down a run game to a halt. Akeem Hicks can rush the passer a little better. Now, despite Sue having more sacks, we know when Hicks is healthy and at his best, he's better of a pass rusher than Sue is. But ultimately, Andrew Barry, the guy just doesn't value the position all that much, right? Remember when he moved down from Sheldon Richardson, he cut him before the season last year. Didn't feel like paying top, well, paying a lot for a defensive tackle. He was fine to go cheap with McDowell and Jackson and roll with some young players. And he might do that again, right? Signed cheap Taven Bryan, drafted a defensive tackle in round four, toss out Jordan Elliott and Tommy Togiai, a third and a fourth round pick, and see what happens. But for cheap, why not, right? I understand if Andrew Barry goes, listen, I don't think defensive tackles outside of Aaron Donald should be paid that much. But at some point, if Indomitian Sue says, hey, it's my lifelong dream to play for the Browns, I'll do it for a dollar. Well, then you go, all right, well, for a dollar. So what I'm asking is, what is that threshold for Barry, right? What is the number where he goes, I don't want to pay Sue $4 million. But if he wants to come here for less, you know, veteran minimum, whatever it may be, yeah, I'm willing to run that. So let's ask this question again. In case you missed it yesterday, you weren't on the show. No worries, don't worry. Pick a defensive tackle. Put the initials for the player you would rather sign I understand the argument of let's let the young players play. Let's get some reps to Elliott and Togiai. But Deshaun Watson is not suspended. This is a team ready to win a Super Bowl right now. I'm not really in the bench, in the business of, ooh, let's see what Tommy Togiai looks like. No, let's take some proven veteran leadership like Hicks and Sue. Fourth note, sign Will Fuller, but I put an asterisk right there. The reason why I put an asterisk is that it's correlated to number five, Deshaun Watson is not suspended. I don't want to spend too much time on, of course, the perfect offseason includes Watson not getting a suspension, but that's not in you know Andrew Barry's control. The other things are in his control. But I put sign Will Fuller with an asterisk because if Watson is not suspended, you may not need Will Fuller, right? You gave Watson $230 million because he's a very good quarterback that can bring everyone else up. But if he is suspended... And then you look at this depth chart once again at the wide receiver position. And you go, okay, Amari Cooper's a good receiver, one of the best route runners in the NFL. But after that, 
it reminds me a lot of last year's wide receiver core for much of the season, right? If you remove OBJ from the wide receiver room and you swap Cooper for Landry, and Cooper's an upgrade, I would say that, but somewhat similar playing fields, kind of, but you get the point of you got Baker and now you have Brissett. Did you really change much on offense? You, you, may, you got worse at quarterback. I'd rather have Baker than Brissett. But you got a little better at receiver with Cooper over Landry, but the rest of the crop is the same. So what is your confidence level in the wide receiver room after Amari Cooper, right? Because if Jacoby Brissett is working with that receiver room, is that really a fun offense for six games? Probably not. And you also are probably going to ask Jacoby Brissett to go 500. That's what I think the, the 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 measuring bar, the rule of thumb should be for a backup quarterback. You want your backup to go 500. What's going to help Brissett go 500? Maybe bring him in Will Fuller. Maybe give him an additional weapon to throw to. Because look what Will Fuller did in his best season in 2020 when he only played in 11 games. That's not a good thing. But still in 11 games, 8 touchdowns and 879 yards. What I'm trying to get at here is Give Brissett more weapons if he has to start six games. Don't let Brissett go out on the field with that current wide receiver room and expect great results. Expect great results with Deshaun Watson in that in that wide receiver room. But if you've got to start Brissett for six or four games, why don't you toss an extra piece of dynamite in there? Get him an extra deep target. All right? Add some more playmakers to this roster. But if you've got Watson, you could probably live without Will Fuller. So these are my five-step plan, my five-step plan to a perfect offseason. You trade Baker Mayfield. You get great results from the wide receivers at OTAs. You sign a veteran defensive tackle like Akeem Hicks or Endowment Can Sue for cheap. You sign Will Fuller if Deshaun Watson is suspended. And then number five, like the cherry on top, Deshaun Watson's not suspended. All right. Appreciate everyone that clicked on today's video. If you've watched this far into the video, you're a real one, right? You are a real member of our YouTube dog pound. So type dogs down below. That way I can kind of keep an eye on who the real OGs and MVPs are of the Cleveland Browns report by Chat Sports. Follow me on Twitter, by the way, at Matthew PD. If you want more Browns Twitter updates, I promise I'm a good follow. Trying to grow my game on that platform, reach a thousand Twitter followers. Hit me up. It's in the comments, it's in the description. Click on the link, you're good to go. Appreciate everyone that watched today's show, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with more Browns news and rumors.